want to show you how you can plot the risk return trade-off, that is the expected return and standard deviation for a portfolio that consists of three or more securities. Before I do the three or more security case, let me quickly recap the two security case. So two securities is really quite easy to plot. And how do we do that? Well, the expected return of the portfolio is just going to be a weighted average of the expected returns of each security in the portfolio. So expected return for the portfolio is the weight we put in A times the uh, expected return of A plus the weight we put in B times the expected return of B. The variance for the portfolio can be given by uh, several different formulas. This one is going I'm going to give as the weight in A squared times the variance of A plus the weight in B squared times the variance of B plus 2 times WA times WB times the covariance of A or B. And here I've done it where I've substituted um, the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B times the correlation between A and B. That's the same as the covariance for A and B. And then to get this um, standard deviation here of this variance, we just take the square root of it. So here, I just have an example where I've given some expected return for A, for B, standard deviation of A, standard deviation of B, and the correlation between the two. So it's really easy. Let me slide over here, and we'll look at this, this little graph here. So what we do is we just look at different values um, or different proportions of A or B in our portfolio. So here we would have 100% A and 0% B. Up here we would have 100% of B and 0A. And then here we're moving along. We, we reduce our portfolio of A and add a little bit of B. And you can do that quite easily by just simply plot, simply looking at the percentages, right? And these have to add up to 100%, so we start with 100% in A and 0% in B, and then I just went by 5% increments. And we use the formulas to calculate the standard deviation and the expected return. So it makes sense that the expected return, if it's 100% of A, should be whatever A's expected return is. And if it's 100% in B, it should be what B's expected return is. And we should also see that if we have all our money in A, then the standard deviation for the portfolio should be the standard deviation of A. And that the standard deviation for the portfolio, if we have only B in it, should be the standard deviation for uh, B. So looks like we got that right. How do we do this for more than two securities? You can't use this approach because you'd have A, B, and C and you would have 100% in A, and then 0 in B and C, and then what would you do? 95 and 5 and 0, and you'd have a lot of combinations, which would make it, you know, daunting. So how can we do this? So let me jump over here and, and show you how you can do this. So to save time, I've seen people who've done videos, and they've sort of taken the whole um, process through, and I have videos that show you how to create a, um, how to calculate the returns, how to get the returns from, for example, Yahoo Finance, and then to calculate to convert the prices into returns, and then to compute the, or construct the variance covariance matrix. But in order to save time here, so this is in a half hour video, I've just, um, presented the variance covariance matrix here. And I have four securities in it. And I also have the expected return for these four securities, Amazon, Google, Tesla, and Berkshire Hathaway Class A stock. And we know that the expected return for the portfolio is just going to be an average of these securities. Now, in order to calculate the portfolio variance, we can use this formula. Okay, If the weights are given here, so here I just have it for a three security portfolio, it's this 
um, vector transposed times this variance covariance matrix times this vector again. And that will give us the formula we had before for the two security case, except this will be for n securities. Okay, in Excel, you can do matrix multiplication using the M M U L T function. And it's a little tricky because you have, you know, um, a matrix multiplication by another matrix multiplication. So you have to um, nest these two inside of each other. So we're going to have the weight times the covariance matrix, okay, and do that multiplication then we're also going to multiply by the weight again. And we're going to take the square root of it so we get the standard deviation. And when you do matrix multiplication in Excel, you can't just hit Enter. You have to hit Control-Shift-Enter. So let's see if we can do that. So after we calculate these expected returns, then we're going to try and figure out how to change the weights and so we can construct the uh, risk return trade-off. So we're going to have not one curve as we did before. We're going to have actually a lot of points there that are going to make up this uh, possible risk return trade-off. And some of them are going to be efficient, lie on that efficient frontier. That is the least risk for the given level of expected return or the highest expected return for the given level of risk. Okay, let's start with this right here. Well, first, let me tell you how you calculate some weights. We want to calculate them randomly. So there's actually a function that will randomly generate numbers for us. And those numbers will be between 0 and 1. So I'm going to use the rand array function. And I'm going to tell it I want one row and four columns. So you can see it's come up with these numbers here. Now what I want to do is I want to sum these numbers up and then this divided by the total will be the percentage in Amazon. This divided by the total will be the percentage in Google. So let's do that. Let's hit the summation key and it's going to sum that up for us. And then let's figure out the percentages here. It's going to be equal to this divided by this. And I'm going to hit the F4 key so that it just locks that cell. And I'm going to copy this across. Now I've set up my spreadsheet so that this, um, this is just whatever's in this cell, this is whatever is in this cell, etc. Right, so I have, so I don't have to do this transpose business. I have the vectors in in the formats I want them, and I sum this up so that we know that we have we've done this right. That this is a hundred percent of the weight. Okay, so let's do the expected return here. All right, let me slide this. Actually, I don't have to slide this down. The expected return for the portfolio is just going to be the weight in Amazon times Amazon's expected return plus the weight in Google times its expected return, etc. And we can use the sum product function. And that will multiply these weights. So that's our first array times this. and we get 4.36%. All right, now let's put in this formula here so that we get the standard deviation. Let's see, square root, okay, at MMULT, and what's our first um, vector? It's gonna be this weight comma, times the variance covariance matrix. I'm going to close that up. Wait a minute, I made a mistake here. I forgot to put in the second. So let me go back and correct that. Remember, I have two 
matrix multiplications here. So I have to put in M M U L T again. All right, now let me see if I can get this right. The weights. times the variance covariance matrix and then this is going to be times these weights and I think I need another parenthesis and let's see control shift enter and there I get the standard deviation for the portfolio and that this will change over time so if we um, every time we do something else in the uh, let's refresh refresh all no, I don't want to refresh anyhow um, I don't think I can hit the F9 key that does recalculation because the the program I'm using to record this will um, jump out and do something else now so I have some different random weights but I want to change them a bunch of times so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and uh, I could call this trial I guess okay and so I'm going to do this one see every time I type a number in, you can see some of these numbers changing so I want to fill this in and let's do this a thousand times for example so I could put one two and copy it down or I can use under the summation sign you see this this little thing it's a fill function and if I use the drop down menu I say series this is a column and let's do a thousand uh, trials or replications so if you scroll all the way down I can do that you can see we've got a thousand alright so now I want to put in the standard deviation and I want to put in the expected return and this is going to be equal to what's calculated here. This is the standard deviation. And this is going to be the expected return right here. Right? And you can see they, they keep changing numbers. Now we want to fill in this table. And we can fill in this table by using um, a data function. So let me highlight this and then if I hit control shift down arrow key it'll just highlight everything and let me just scroll up to the top here and I'm going to go to data and what if and I want a data table so this is a column input we don't have anything in the rows and we have to just give it a blank cell here the reason we do that is Excel needs some place to do the calculations so let's hit OK and it fills in the entire table for us so let me just reformat this control shift down arrow and let me just put it into um, percentage terms and I'll give it a couple of decimal places so looks nice now alright so let's see if we can plot this data so again, control shift down arrow, and I'm going to go to insert, and then I want to pick a chart. I always like to pick the recommended charts, because we know what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like this, so that's the right chart. We know we don't want this or this or this, so it makes it much easier for us. And you can see we've essentially plotted this. These are these portfolios in here are inefficient these outside on the outer edge on the northeast edge are the efficient portfolios but we've been able to get different portfolios with different percentages of um, the three secure the four securities I'm sorry the four securities right so this is not very efficient right they're better it's a better portfolio over here that has a different um, proportion of the four securities right or here there's a better one up here if you go straight up that has a better um, expected return for the same level of risk so it's a really simple way to do this okay um, 
Sometimes you use a data table, and I have some videos of that to do Monte Carlo simulations. But this is a great way to get a lot of different um, risk return trade or, or different percentages so that we, uh, we don't just have 25%, 25%, 25%, and 25%, right, and have to change all of them. It does it for us. So you can, if you're looking to plot the efficient frontier or the risk return trade-off between three or more securities, this is a great way to do it. If you have 10 securities, you could do the same, exactly the same thing. So I hope you found this helpful. Thank you.